Imagine loading into a Minecraft world and having zero room for any mistakes or else it's game over. Now imagine taking this concept and on hardcore mode with half a heart of health trying to beat the game as fast as possible. You'd have to be crazy to attempt that, right? Fall more than 3 blocks, stay underwater for just a tiny bit too long, or get hit by a mob, it's GG. And the scary part is that I haven't even brushed the surface on the amount of ways in which you can take 1 damage in Minecraft. To the average player, this sounds like a nightmare situation, but Minecraft speedrunners have taken this and made it its own category. Known as Half Heart Hardcore, it's quite difficult to think of a more punishing and brutal speedrun. Although many will get World War II flashbacks at the mere sight of the letters HHH, some speedrunners are willing to take on this ridiculous challenge. One of those speedrunners is Ninja Brain, and to say that he has dominated the category would be an understatement. Buckle up, because after this video, you're gonna question what you previously thought was impossible in Minecraft Random Sea Glitchless speedruns. Hey, just before I get into the video, I want to let you know that I now have a Discord server, link in the description. So who is Ninja Brain? Well, like many other speedrunners, he started off with humble beginnings. The first video he uploaded to his YouTube channel is Lorenz Attractor followed by classics such as Cellular Automation Traffic Model, Small Difference in Car Density when P equals 0.8, Occasional Traffic Gems, Particle Metropolis Situation, and Multigrid. Trust me, I know exactly what all of those things are. Anyways, we're here to talk about Minecraft speedrunning, so I think you should know that he currently holds the 9th place time on the 1.16 RSG leaderboards within 1122. The reason he started playing Half Heart Hardcore is because he found a strategy that could revolutionize the category. Just in case you're unfamiliar with how a 1.16 RSG speedrun works, I'll quickly break it down. In the overworld, players need at least 7 iron, and once that's obtained, they enter the nether. In the nether, both the fortress and a bastion have to be within some proximity to the nether portal, or else the run gets reset. After heading to both of them and getting the necessary resources, players build a nether portal in a stronghold ring in the nether. In the overworld, they use Eyes of Ender to point toward the stronghold, and once that's located, enter the end. The final thing to do in this run is kill the ender dragon. In case you are unaware, with normal strats, exploding the beds on the end fountain to one cycle the dragon deals half a heart of damage each, and being that you only have half a heart, that wasn't viable for this run. His discovery was that with at least 10 armor points and a full hunger bar, if you have a saturation level equal or more than mushroom stew, you can one cycle without taking any damage. For example, if you were to eat mushroom stew to restore full hunger right before the one cycle, it would work. Likewise, if you were to eat two pieces of bread to restore full hunger, it would work, but eat just one piece and it wouldn't work because bread has less saturation than mushroom stew. With this new discovery, he started the grind and his first great run would come on August 10th, 2021, about an hour and a half into his live stream. He spawned on an island and after gathering wood, he looted a shipwreck which contained enough wheat to make 10 bread and 7 iron ingots. Nearby the ship was a magma ravine which Ninja Brain would use to make a portal and enter the nether at 220. Immediately upon entry, he used his F3 to locate a bastion and now was the small task of getting there. With some fancy boat tricks, he defeated obstacle 1 and after climbing up this small cliff, he spotted the blaze spawner of the nether fortress. Because only one damage was required to kill him, he opted to play it safe and head to the bastion first, since piglins can trade fire resistance. A little bit later, he stumbled upon a soul sand valley biome, which is not what he wanted to see, because on hardcore mode, skeletons are deadly accurate. Fortunately, none spawned on his line, and after collecting blocks and building up, obstacle 2, a stray piglin, nearly got the better of him. Soon though, he spotted the bastion, and it was a stables type, the one that spawns the most hostile creatures. Lucky for him, he was able to enter unseen through the backside, and he was already at the place with the gold blocks. By setting up a too deep hole in the path and breaking the gold, angry piglins stormed to his location, only to be distracted by the shiny stuff. After getting the backup gold, he headed to the top chest. Fortunately, the piglins that would have normally been there were trading, and he was able to loot the chests in peace. That's not all, because this particular stable's bastion happened to have the maximum number of top chests, often referred to as a triple triple chest stables. In those chests, he not only got 18 obsidian, but full gold armor and 10 iron ingots as well, which enabled him to craft a chestplate and have more than enough armor bars filled. 
The piglin trades went well, and he was out of the bastion with 2 stacks of pearls, 22 obsidian, multiple fire resistance potions, and 48 string, which happened to be just enough to craft 4 beds for the 1 cycle. Now the fortress, and after maneuvering his way down this gap, he found a blaze spawner. After blocking off all directions to avoid surprise wither skeletons, he crafted an axe to fight the blazes. Even with fire resistance, he had to be very careful because blazes can still deal melee damage. For this reason, he chose his times of attack very carefully in order to avoid getting spawned on. After killing 7 and getting 3 blaze rods, he threw down a nether portal and entered the overworld. But Pika, why is he leaving the nether on 3 rods, some of you just said to your screens? Well, since he had over 20 obsidian, he was able to do educated travel, so after gauging the distance of the stronghold from that portal, he knew where to build a second one. Anyways, once back in the nether, he used another fire resistance potion and killed 4 more blazes, getting 4 more rod drops. Now it was time to head to the approximate location that would take him to the stronghold. For Unfortunately, it wasn't too far away and after towering off the fortress a bit, he began to build his exit portal when BAM! Obstacle 3, a gas fireball. Fortunately, Ninja Brain, like his name suggests, is a quick thinker and turned his render distance down to 2. He exited the nether for the final time at just over 11 minutes and he knew the stronghold would be close. Unfortunately, he had to triangulate it in a dark oak forest, but 4 eyes later, he located the exact chunk and now it was time to dig down. One slight issue though, when you dig into the entrance of the stronghold, you will fall more than 3 blocks, so he opted to dig a 2 wide hole to be safe. Soon he reached the stronghold and something that you should know is that strongholds are not particularly easy to navigate without taking damage. Anything from zombies to silverfish could surprise him at a moment's notice and that is precisely what happened when he tried to break a stone brick in order to access the iron door. Silverfish have a notoriously small hitbox and with one hit from them, it's game over. Fortunately, Ninja Brain was able to fend them off and a bit later he found a chest with some apples. This is quite possibly the best thing he could have found in a chest because he still had plenty of leftover gold from the bastion and with golden apples he didn't have to worry about his saturation level. Anyways, without running into any more mobs, he found the porter room and after dealing with more silverfish, Ninja Brain was in the end at 1354. First, he booked it to the center fountain to set up the obsidian. Next, he crafted golden apples in beds and after eating the gapple, the dragon perched. A moment of silence for what took place next. Fuck. Unfortunately, it was go next for Ninja Brain and only time would tell when he would get a similar caliber run. Almost a month after his nearly insane run, on September 5th, 2020, a little over 3 hours into his Twitch stream, Ninja Brain would load into a pretty good seed. Right off the spawn, there was a ruined portal containing an enchanted golden apple. Immediately, he possessed the item which would easily let him one cycle dragon due to the 8 extra hearts of health. Next, he made his way to a buried shipwreck, which after some digging around, gave him 11 iron ingots, 6 pieces of bread, and nearly a stack of rotten flesh. Yummy. After a bit of boating, he made his way to an ocean ravine, but it didn't have any magma or connect to a cave, so digging at Y11 was the next best option. Eventually, he ran into some lava, but not before he got 3 diamonds, enough to craft a diamond pick. One pretty scuffed nether portal later, he was in the nether at 4.30. Immediately, there was a fortress, but on half a heart, he wasn't going to risk playing that before the bastion. After using his F3 to find a bastion, he quickly discovered that this seed was kind of insane. To add on to having a perfect path to the top chest of a stable's bastion, he already had gold armor from the ruined portal at the start, so piglins weren't even aggroed at him. Although he entered from a different area as his last run, Ninja Brain performed the same Stables Bastion route, digging a 2 deep hole and breaking blocks to lure piglins. 
The top chest gave him 17 obsidian and combining that with the trades, he had 21 to go along with the 16 pearls, 3 fire resistance potions, and 36 string. Isn't at least 48 required to get 4 beds, the minimum amount of explosives needed to kill the dragon? Well, yes, but you see, he also had enough crying obsidian and glowstone to craft and charge a respawn anchor, which has the same effect as beds in the end dimension. At 7 minutes, he was heading to the fortress, and aside from a lackluster nether entry time, this run was going flawlessly. Well, unfortunately, just getting his blaze rods and leaving would be too easy, so the game decided to throw a skeleton right on his path. After a near brush with death, he figured that the best way to eliminate this problem was to go where it couldn't shoot and whack its legs, which worked quite well. But oh no, three more skeletons. At that point, he decided to go down a completely different path, which conveniently took him to a blaze spawner. After killing two blazes, he exited the nether in order to calculate the distance and angle of the stronghold. This time though, he did his calculated travel with quite a bit more precision. After getting the angles of the two eye throws, he did some math while killing blazes, which is something he's quite good at. Anyways, enjoy the time lapse of him getting the rest of his rods. Hey, welcome back, it's been a while. Remember when I said that Ninja Brain is quite good at math? Well, he was about to put that to the test because he had to build his second exiting nether portal. I'm gonna let this clip speak for itself. Yes, I know it's absolutely absurd that the end portal already had four eyes in it, right? Jokes aside, he was only off on his calculated travel by the distance between the starter staircase and the portal room of the stronghold, which boggles my mind. He entered the end at 14 minutes and after placing a respawn anchor on the center fountain, it was time to wait for the perch. But remember, he had an enchanted golden apple. When the dragon did perch, Ninja Brain ate it and pearled to the fountain, and why wouldn't the one cycle be super clean to add on to this absolutely absurd run? Let's fucking go, man. First world record, and it's by five plus minutes. Oh my god. 15 minutes and 21 seconds was his final time, and this entire run was truly a work of art. In my opinion, runs like this separate the good from the great. There are plenty of good runners with solid mechanics and a thorough understanding of speedrunning strategies. A great runner, however, like a Ninja Brain, has everything down to a science and can perform when it counts. So how much time did he beat the world record in Half Heart Hardcore by? Well, the previous one was 21 minutes and 26 seconds, held by Dreaming Art Tours, so it's fair to say that his run truly showed the potential of the category. Currently, there are not many runs on the leaderboards, but it's my hope that Ninja Brain's run will encourage more people to give it a shot. In a game that is so dominated by very RNG-based categories, it's nice to see another one that requires an insane amount of skill. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, join my Discord server if you want, and have a great day.